Today is an awesome day. The weather is really good. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just perfect. And well, let's get into the video, okay? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get out of auto. And let's get to it. Okay, so I hope you like that intro. Um, I'm, this is not sponsored by Storyblocks or at all, but my brother-in-law let me use his account and I am obsessed with them. Um, hope you like that intro. I used a After Effects template from um, Storyblocks. So yeah, it's not sponsored by them at all. I just love this, like, where you can find like everything, you know? Um, this is like a free commercial for them. Um, but yeah, um, so I'm going to show you how to get out of auto and all you have to do, literally all you have to do is turn the dial. You're out of auto. Congratulations. You are now a professional photographer and that's a lie. Okay. So, um, so I'm in manual right now in my camera and well, I started photography around six years ago it was December 10th 2013 when I got my first camera I got it I took a picture and I was like why is this why is the flash popping out I'm like I don't want to use the flash and I looked at it and it's it was an auto the person that we had lent it to um, was using it in auto and I was like ha ah, yeah that makes no sense I don't want the flash um, I don't like how flashes look like that like the on-camera flashes I don't like how they look so I was like, how do I turn this off? So I just turned it to manual. I turned it to manual and I never turned it back. I never went back to auto. And for six years, I have been shooting with manual settings. And the number one tip I have for you is to use the meter. The light meter, that little dot that you see like moving around, that is my number one guide. Some people are gonna tell you that it's not good enough or you will find the sweet spot for it with practice everything takes practice okay so my sweet spot is honestly like the zero is right here negative one is right here it's like smack in the middle of those two that's my sweet spot for exposure um it might vary with different lighting situations but mostly that's that's where i try to keep it um but yeah so play around with the settings um with all of them one one thing that I'm gonna let you know is the higher your ISO is the more noise it's gonna have so the more grainy your image is gonna look so if you're all about that film um, vintage vibe go for it turn your ISO all the way up if you want but your ISO makes your image brighter so it makes the sensor more sensible to light okay so what you want to do is balance all these three factors which are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So ISO is making your sensor more sensitive to light, so it brightens up your image. What aperture does is all in the lens. So the, your lens says f3.5 to 5.6. What that means is that there's a little hole uh, inside the lens that, that can open or retract. So the bigger it is, the more light comes through. So this is an f1.8 lens, um, this is a 50mm f1.8, so a lot of light comes through this lens. This lens right here is a kit lens, it's a 3.5 to 5.6. And what, what, what that does is it lets more light in, so you can turn your ISO down and produce higher quality images without that much noise. And it helps a lot when you're taking pictures at night or inside or at concerts or all that. And yeah, so that's aperture. It's basically an iris like your eye. When you go outside, it closes up really small. Or when you shine a flashlight in your eyeball, it, it, may, it turns it really small so you can actually like focus on something and it's not all bright. Like when you're in a dark situation, your pupils like open up. That's basically the same thing with a lens. So yeah that's that shutter speed what is shutter speed shutter speed is let me show you 
some people are gonna criticize me about this, but camera. So you see the mirror there. You take a picture. And behind the mirror, there's a shutter. So what that does is it takes the picture. So and that's what exposes the sensor to the light and it closes back up. So there's a rule with shutter speed. I'm trying to explain this as briefly and as fast as possible for you to start playing around with settings. I will be making another video diving deeper, well, other videos. Um, am I in focus? Let's find the square. Ah, I need to click on my face. Okay, so I will be diving deeper in other videos and I'm going to be explaining all of these three factors to you and more. There's a lot more to learn, but I'm just quickly explaining so you can start playing around with your settings and start getting used to um, using manual and using that light meter to check um, your exposure. And yeah, okay, let's get to shutter speed. Shutter speed is what, there's like this little shutter, like it opens and closes. So there's a thing with shutter speed. The speed is how fast and it's gonna open and close. And the faster it is, the darker it's gonna be. The slower it is, the more light it's gonna let into the sensor. I'm gonna throw a graph up here, right here. So as you can see, there's a line here in the middle and it's one over 60. And what that means is that after 60, um, after 1 over 60, your images are going to start looking a bit more blurry. Um, if you're like a steady hand. If you're like really shaky, like 1 over 100 is going to be like the limit for you. Um, so what happens is when you're taking a picture and it's a fast shutter speed, it closes and it opens and closes really fast. So it's less time that your camera is shaking. So it results, it results in a sharper image. So um, if you have your shutter speed, I'm gonna prove it to you right here. Um, at let one over 20, if I take a picture, it's gonna take longer. Let's expose that correctly. It's gonna take longer. So the longer it takes, the more I move my hands. So when I, if I take a picture like, like that, see that picture right there? It's all blurry. It's all like streaks, you know? If I take a picture with a fast shutter speed at the same, doing the same thing, it actually captures what I'm taking a picture of, even though I moved it. And you just saw me do that. That's what shutter speed does. That's a really brief and quick explanation. So to keep a sharp image, keep your shutter speed one above one over 160. And try to keep it higher than that. And after doing that, set your ISO to what it needs to be for you to get a correct exposure. If you want to get this blurry background, the lower the number of your aperture is, the more blurry it's going to be. And the higher the number of your aperture is, the more it's going to be in focus. So basically think of it this way. You have a focal focus point right here. And when you're at one point, you have, I'm going to explain it like this. This is the focus, the thing you want to focus on. And if you're at f1.8, I'm going to put the thing I want to focus on down here. If you're at f1.8, you have this much space that things will be in focus in. If you're at f22, this many things will be in focus. So the smaller the number, the smaller the, the focus range, the things that are going to be in focus is going to be. So I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to grab, change the settings in my camera for them to be at f16, which is like as high as this lens can go, as small as this lens can go. So I'm going to switch that and I'm going to show you how everything back here is going to 
like sharpen up and like be more in focus. Okay, as you can see, everything is now like, like you can see what it is, you know? It's not all blurry and like bocalicious and beautiful. It's all sharp. And as you can see now, the image is way noisier. It has so much more noise because I had to raise the ISO. So that's just a little ex example of how to work with um, aperture and ISO and shutter speed. Right now my shutter speed is at 1 over 50. That's the correct setting for video. Video and photo have different settings. I'll make another video on photo on video settings and the correct way to use them. But yeah, I want to turn it back because I don't like how that looks. It looks too noisy and it looks too sharp behind me. So uh, let's turn this a little bit. Okay, so I hope you learned something. Hope I could teach you a little bit about photography. I hope you understood what I said. I don't know if I mixed you up more, but I will be making those other things. Guy with motorcycle. I will be making those other videos to dive deep into what I just explained right now. So if you want to learn more about photography, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to check out some of my products that I have on there. Um, down in the description below. I, I'm going to link all of the gear that I use so you can like see that I, I don't use expensive gear. I use what I have and this camera is like eight years old. That camera is really old. That camera is really old but they're still good for what I'm doing. So um, I also have Lightroom presets if you are into that. If you're editing in Lightroom if you're that advanced in like your photography journey if you started editing your pictures that is awesome I have some Lightroom presets to give you a perfect starting point or a perfect image with one click sometimes it works sometimes you have to adjust a few things but they're right there in my description go check them out they are five dollars really affordable really inexpensive so hope you like this video leave a thumbs up if you didn't like this video, click the dislike button twice and see you in the next one. Subscribe.